The T2 Tile project is building an indefinitely scalable computational stack. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. Welcome back to T Tuesday Updates. It's been uh, over a month. So uh, in November, uh, the U.S. Uh, elections were held, and by November 7th, uh, Biden and Harris were uh, declared the winner, and basically every day since then as well. We'll see how that comes out. Uh, also, a year ago, November, I did National Novel Writing Month, NaNoWriMo, and I worked on this novel called Best Effort that folks who've been around the channel long enough will maybe remember. Uh, uh, this year in November, this was part of the reason why there have been no updates in November, was to work on the novel. Uh, um, so this was last year, 2019. I went from zero. This, this stops at... 27 or something like that, but I think I ended up at, you know, between 30 and 35,000 words, which I was supposed to make 50,000. I didn't. It was really hard, but I produced a lot of stuff and, and some stuff that I liked quite a bit. So my idea for this time was to take a chunk of it that I kind of liked that was perhaps arguably more or less standalone and try to cut it down to make a short story uh, that I could get actually out into the world, either just, you know, send it out to fans or put it up on the web or maybe even submit it to places where science fiction-y fiction might get published. Uh, um, so I was looking around for that. I found places like the Strange Horizon. There's lots of places that uh, uh, will, uh, will, will buy, I guess, some of this stuff. I mean, who knows if they'd be interested at all. Now, the key point for me was uh, up to 10,000 words, but under 5,000 preferred. So that meant, it, you know, my uh, this is my, <laughs> this is my Nano Remo for November. 2020, uh, uh, which is starting from over 30,000 words and going for 5,000. So that's the dotted line down there on the bottom. Uh, um, I got to 10,000. So our, our, I, you know, from one point of view, I could just immediately say, hey, I'm done and ship it off. But it, it doesn't work uh, the way it's c currently constructed. It doesn't work standalone. And it's got a lot of stuff that needs to go out. And so now my Nano Remo, or the latter part of it, because I was doing other things, is not about trying to create more words, it's trying to get rid of words. And I am so much more comfortable getting rid of words than I am generating words. Uh, so now my uh, my uh, <coughs> fit line is going down. My goal is to get to 5,000 words or thereabouts, if it's 6,000 or something, okay. Uh, um, but it needs to move right along, and, and the current stuff doesn't, because I was trying to say everything that I could think of to say. Now it's time to gather the riches and hone it down to something that might actually shine. So this, I feel like, even though I, I really only spent a couple of days on it at the at the end here, uh, I feel like this is the sort of thing that I could spend an hour or two on a day or several hours a week over multiple times, uh, where, uh, you know, or after my brain's pickled from trying to write code or whatever it is, I could go boil some words out of this thing. Uh, we'll see. It probably won't be that simple, but, but that's the way it's feeling now. So I'm hoping, I'm not going to put a specific date on it, but I, I'm hoping that it can actually boil this down to something that we could send off to Strange Horizons. They don't even take submissions again until the end of January or something like that. So, you know, we shall see. That's the nano short story mo, or the Nash short mo, whatever. You get the idea. So that was that aspect of it. Uh, uh, in addition, seven years ago, almost, I made this video called The Computer Universe, uh, uh, an introduction to classical hyperspace, uh, just to try to get a bunch of the ideas out uh, about how it seems to me the computational and the relationship between computing things and living things uh, could be useful as, as far as a way for people, not just super nerds, not just people that are actually uh, keyboard masters of digital computers, but people who are just interacting with other people and trying to get through the world and as best they can. Um, and 
So did that first round of it, uh, uh, used a bunch of chili peppers as an example and so forth, and ended up at this idea of a high dimensional bit vector, a group of zeros and ones, that uh, represents a coordinate, a fix in hyperspace. That was not supposed to be the end of the introduction to classical hyperspace. That was just part one. There was supposed to be part two about hyper subspaces and for force fields, wormholes, all kinds of things, and it never happened. Uh, uh, so this NaNoWriMo, actually what I spent most of the time on was working on the visualization software and something like a script for lecture two. Uh, um, and so this is a, just a little a little teaser of the uh, the visualization. Now we've taken a, a hyperspace fix and we've turned it into black and white squares. We don't know which is zero and which is one because it doesn't even really matter. The way this is developing, uh, it, it's just an arbitrary distinction rather than any kind of actual numerical value. But we can put around it, uh, if we use the vertical axis to represent goodness or quality or something like, something like that, then we can say if we flip just this one guy, where would we go? Up or down? Flip this guy up or down? And we can build this whole hyperspace landscape, the neighborhood around a given point. And that's the basis of the visualizations that I want to do in uh, lecture two of the introduction to classical hyperspace. So we'll see how that develops. I, <clears throat> like I did seven years ago, I made a little teaser, which we saw at the tail end of the previous one, uh, uh, something like that. I don't know if there's time left. I'll stick the new trailer on the end here. or It's easy to find if not. Uh, um, and so here it is, you know, seven years later, uh, uh, introduction to classical hyperspace two. Uh, <laughs> uh, one of the things I especially liked about it was that this time uh, we have uh, original music uh, uh, that uh, one of my oldest friends, uh, Peter News, who plays the drums, uh, kindly did the, the percussion uh, for this thing. It was all very quick and rushed and so forth, but it was a lot of fun to be able to do that. Uh, um, and... I pushed it out. It came out Sunday uh, midday, and it, it's done, you know, by the standards of the Dave Ackley channel, it's done, you know, okay. It's gotten a few hundred views over the first couple of days, uh, um, and okay. Now, as of this morning, we were 262 views. Like, that's good for the Dave Ackley channel. I'll take it. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, additional point, the, the top video, so what is our superpower? That's the name of the teaser. But uh, HSA 101.1, the computer universe, has now broken into the top three since that's, so I say, since that's one of the prerequisites for the second lecture that's coming up. In addition, uh, this time, never done before for me, uh, uh, I also tweeted not just a link to the YouTube video, but I actually uploaded a variant of the video straight to Twitter so that people could see it and made a little snarky, whatever, you know. I mean, my problem with these things is I always make them too esoteric. I always make them too complicated. I always think, oh yeah, people will get the joke. It's like, you know, very few people get the joke. Some people are willing to play along. Some people get it. I'll figure it out. I'll get. I'll get the thing titrated. I'll get the uh, complexity, the mysteriousness, appropriate somehow, someday. Let's hope. But my point of mentioning this is, in the same amount of time, actually a few hours less, uh, according to Twitter's analytics, you know, we're doing twice as many views on the Twitter upload as we are on the YouTube one. So I'm happy to have them both out there. They can both be found by however it is, uh, uh, and that's where we're at on the teaser. Oh, and the teaser, by the way, says the full lecture, uh, HSA 101.2 hyper subspaces will be out in January of 2021. So that's, feel free to make that January 31st of 2021, but that's just in the next two months. So that's what's going on there. All right. In addition, uh, uh, community news. Um, we've got a, we got a new, uh, uh, Nerd uh, Abinov, I think is his name. Uh, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, and that now ends the 2300 series of uh, LCF nerd numbers. We're now into the 24, 200, 
240s, the 240 series, uh, uh, like that. And that's good. We also got uh, a, a substantial one-off donation from a, a longtime supporter, which is really great. Enough that, you know, with all of these little bits and pieces put together, we may actually be developing a little bit of room to think about doing something, whether that means, you know, buying a bunch of cameras to try to figure out how to record this thing, assuming the grid ever comes together, uh, um, or perhaps organizing some kind of virtual workshop in 2021 uh, uh, for folks who are interested in this stuff. I don't know. Do you have any ideas? Uh, um, it's not a ton of money, but it's more than nothing. So that's all very exciting. Uh, we also have uh, monthly supporters. You guys are fantastic. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, um, all right. In addition, uh, uh, Luke uh, dropped this link to a YouTube video in the Gitter in our chat room for the T2 tile uh, uh, that you know says it has before and after diagram similar spot. I, I took a look at it and it was very cool. It was this thing called Color Code by this guy Murillo Polizzi. Polizzi. I don't know how to say it. I'm sorry. Uh, um, that was very cool. It was very much like Splat, uh, um, where the idea was was that you would take uh, um, <coughs> it was this little little uh, screen. It looked kind of like you know a little uh, one of those. I don't even know the names of these video game console things that people use. <sighs> They're all after my time, but I recognize the Flynn from Adventure Time there. Uh, um, and you write rules that just match colors to colors. If you see this color pattern, you can replace it with that color pattern and so forth. And it was very cool. Uh, um, and I, I mentioned, I made a comment. It's like BMO, that's a guy from Adventure Time, meets BitPict, uh, which is this system for graphical rewrites, for diagrammatic reasoning by George Furness uh, that goes way back. That was 1998. Uh, uh, he, he was writing papers and doing work about it for, for 10 years, if not more. Uh, um, and, it, you know, you'd have stuff like this that just looks like direct pictures, and then using rewrite rules, you could have things happen like they would fall down and they would stand up perfectly because there was no noise in the bit bit. bit picked universe unless you put it in yourself. Uh, um, and also, uh, George Furness, in addition to being a super genius, he's a, he's a great friend of mine, so that was nice, too. Uh, uh, all right, and uh, just, uh, you know, after Luke, uh, we left comments in there, uh, Murillo uh, showed up in the chat, and he's been interacting uh, with Andrew and Luke and everybody uh, uh, over the last couple of days, and it's really been great. And, you know, for me... <sighs> Finding another person, finding another kindred spirit uh, out there. Like everybody talks about how the internet lets you find your audience, no matter what it is. But you know, when it when it, it, it comes, it, it's not just a flood. It doesn't have to go viral to have each person that finds it feel like, wow, this is really cool. I'm really happy that Marillo, you know, sort of found our our little rebel alliance, our little our little community, uh, um, and has been contributing stuff. And you know. Uh, implementing stuff like from BitPict in his color code variations like that. It's all very cool. So, and 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 there's his web page uh, like that. So, so Marillo, welcome. Uh, um, and that's it. So, you know, conspicuously missing from this summary is, you know, where is the uh, the code on the tiles? Where's the grid at? And so forth. Uh, um, I really took a month off as far as all of my deepest fears <laughs> have been sort of hanging over me the whole time. Uh, uh, and I'm going to label them all specifically to take their power away or try to. Uh, um, so there's intertile events. We've been looking at this for months. Uh, uh, and there's bugs in the intertile event system. I don't know how deep they go as far as is this just an easy little thing that once it's found, it's going to be a two-byte level, a two bite or a two-line fix? Or is it going to be a whole redesign? I don't know. Uh, uh, but there's bugs at the MFM level, the, the upper level, where we have atoms moving around and doing all these events. There's also bugs at the Linux kernel module level. Those scare me even more because when they kernel panics, I lose my log files. So, so far, I have had very little success 
localizing uh, what's going on when those bugs hit. And, you know, there's just this thing, so Xeno's debugging, right? That, you know, every time you solve one bug, there's still another bug, but it takes twice as long to find it. And you find that one. And so the, the prospect of actually reaching correct uh, uh, gets further and further away. Now, this it starts to come home to me that I actually understand that, you know, at some level, best effort is it also includes bugs. It's not just hardware problems. And, you know, it could be that we're going to say, no, you got to live with these things. You need to write your atom code, your molecule code, so that, you know, a, a hunk could get punched out of the middle, like a whole tile's worth might reboot. And your computation, any given piece of it might get torn up. But your whole larger computation, something that's much bigger than a single tile, needs to survive. <sighs> and I think that's probably an important transition to get to. That, you know, when I think about things like the swap lines and all the stuff that I've been talking about that I talked about in the A-Life Lightning uh, talk uh, a couple of months ago, uh, um, that is still working at the sort of deterministic level. Every single event counting on, if it looks like this beforehand, it's going to look like that after, and there aren't any other changes coming in. And if things can get torn up, if you know a piece of tile can go out, then you have to have more complicated stuff, or you have to have stuff that makes weaker assumptions to begin with, where you just have like clouds of particles that don't even really have a specific one-to-one -one relation to their neighbors. They just count them up and say, you know, have, have we got a good density here and that you know let that ride out a certain level of failures and then carry that same thing higher and higher when you start using clouds to make cloud membranes then you have cells that might get a piece punched out and they need to be able to clean up and so forth we've known this i just didn't realize that it might happen because my lower level was buggy maybe it does maybe it doesn't i don't know what I do know is that for the next video, uh, uh, two weeks uh, shortly before Christmas, uh, uh, my job is to re-engage at the MFM intertile event bug stage to do what I need, use the tools the, that we saw, the SRF to move files around the grid and so forth, capture some of these bugs and that we can look at in the Weaver and try to get some insight about what's going on. That is the mission. That is the only mission. Thank you so much, everybody, for continuing to come and check these videos out. I, you know, we're a very small group, but the point for me is that it's a big enough group that I actually feel an obligation to try to have some things to say, to try to actually make progress. And so I thank you all uh, for continuing to stop by and take a look. Stay safe. Stay the right amount of sane. We'll see you in two weeks.